<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Tuesday night Bible study. And uh, we're going to continue in our study. What is salvation? An in-depth look at the subject, the teaching of salvation. And, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. And so we're going to continue on. I want to kind of do a, go back and do a, just a little background because again, I'm ask, I'm starting really from the beginning of what salvation is, and I, I just think that this is such an an important um, subject, and I and, and and judging by the many many doctrines, but in the uh, idea of um, the uh, <laughs> um, the different do excuse me denominations <coughs> oh, excuse me and um, so I want to just um, I, I want to kind of go back because first and foremost the word salvation what does it mean in the first place and of course we have to ask the term what does it mean in the Bible salvation I, I started off you know in our series here and talking about and I put this phrase on it salvation that you knowing teaching with salvation uh, knowing um, oh, hold on see because now I'm getting here um, the, the, the one of the phrases and I think I said why do we need to be saved okay um, and, and it's and, and my, my my first title was the in-depth teaching on salvation and then I says that you may know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven so that sentence right there you'll be surprised that there are many people who do not know that they're going to heaven they're Christians. They are professing Christians. In some cases, been been that way forever, and um, but don't know that they're going to heaven. You know, do not know that they're going to heaven, and that's that's kind of uh, very interesting. Um, hmm. Wonder why I'm not uh, picking this up here. But anyway. <coughs> um. um but anyway, uh, but there's so many people who don't know that they're going to heaven. I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. I know. Um, let me also say this. I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. Not due to anything that I'm doing, however. In other words, I, I, I don't believe that I'm going to heaven because... Um, of goodness in me, okay. So that's not because of any goodness or good deeds or or good works. And I'm gonna get into that later because there are people who hope. You know, there's this old phrase, there's a couple of phrases that people say that you know I'm I'm just trying to make heaven my home. Or I've heard this phrase you know I just want to be ready when he comes there are people that say well you know you really won't know until the judgment day they're believers that actually believe this right and the sad thing is is that it's not so they don't have the assurance that Jesus gave right so that that becomes the issue they don't have the assurance of salvation that Jesus gave okay so again that's why again I'm we're going through I, I really and I want to start from the beginning so the other question is then why do we need to be saved and if you remember this phrase here I told you this was a <coughs> excuse me this was a um 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 billboard I saw many years ago that um, it said simply that saved from what? What are we saved from? 
what do we why, why are we saved right saved from what and that was a very interesting billboard because I thought you know that you know here you have this there's no questions to it right there's no answers from it but saved from what right um so um and that's a but it's a good question what are we saved from why are we saved um, the word salvation, as it's used in the Bible, is a very generic way. It, it's used in a very broad sense, right? So, it's, but it, it it often means this: the root meaning. It means to be delivered from, rescued from. Okay, so then you can plug in then rescued from what? Um, Save, like for example, David used it. A lot saved from my enemies or rescue me from my enemies now of course in the eternal sense that's we're, we're saved from our sins we're saved from the wrath of God okay that that's what we're saved from the wrath of God which then we have to then ask the next question um, how do we get saved from God's wrath or why are we facing the wrath of God okay so why are we facing the wrath of God okay so um, I, I, I kind of went back and I said well we have to understand who we are right let me read uh, this scripture and then I'm going to kind of go back and do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where are you at? Uh, I think I want Genesis chapter 2. Or oh, is it? Is this what I want here? Uh, verse. No, that's not what I want. Uh, verse 16. Well, I'll read. Verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, he says, for on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. <clears throat> a very strict, it's a command. And, and, and God never gives us suggestions anyway. They're always commands. So you just kind of know that whenever God speaks to us, it is always a command. Okay, so just, just kind of know that. It is never... God never speaks to us uh, about, um, um, <coughs> he never speaks to us, um, and you know, look, I would like for you to do this, hey, you know, I, re I really would like for you to do this, I hope you can do this, but no, it is always, um, it is always um, a command. So he, he commands Adam, he says, don't eat of the tree. And we talk about this. People ask why. Why did he put the tree there? It's it's really irrelevant because Adam didn't have to eat of the tree. Now, if you remember in our last study, we kind of talked about the life that Adam lived before sin, and it was a glorious life. I mean, just just <clears throat> in this here when it talks about God plates man, you know. Um, Oh, let's see. Um, verse 15, it says, and, and the Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. This was a spectacular garden. We don't, we don't have a whole lot of details, <coughs> but it, this is a spectacular, it was a spectacular place. And other writers, of course, when we move forward into, you know, you move forward into the Bible, you see how they mention the, the 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 garden of Eden that it was spectacular 
and Adam lived there. Adam had full uh, use, full uh, use of his brain. Now they tell us, because I'm not a scientist, I can only go off of, uh, I can only go off of what they tell us. But they tell us that we operate on about 10% of our brain capacity. Now just think about that. <coughs> think about what we could have if we did not have. Um, if we, if, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this, if sin hadn't happened. So the reason why, I, to me, the primary reason why we do not operate off, you know, more than 10% of our brain capacity because of sin. But Adam did. Adam, Adam, he lived in this full capacity. We get some, we get some glimpses. Remember, he named all of the animals. And who knows what would have happened had he not sinned with full capacity, the full capacity of his brain. Who knows what would have happened then? What would have happened to Adam had he not uh, used his full capacity, right? What, what would have happened there? Could we have had space travel? Certainly the uh, advances that we just had just in the last couple of hundred years, right? The leaps within the last hundred years. And so man has been around all of this time and we're just now getting to these leaps. We're, we're just now reaching this. We're just now arriving at these um these leaps here and at you know um, I will also say this um, let me tell you what, one reason why man will never ever have space travel in this in the, in this current thing here why man will never ever have space travel why man will never have uh, we, we'll never we, we will never be able to go beyond our planet meaning living and to travel uh, because of the sinfulness of man. That's why. We just won't. Man is too greedy. He's too sinful. Um, you think about, is it possible? Is it possible that we could get a cure for cancer? And other diseases? Is it possible? Is it possible but hindered by greed? Right? If you get a, what would happen to all the hospitals if you cured all the diseases? The medical field, right? Um, so again, sinfulness, but we'll get to that later. The hindrance there, right? So Adam lived a very spectacular life. There was no aging. Um, time existed. Time always existed since when God created it. So there is, there's always been a 24-hour rotation of the earth. 365 days around the sun. That's the way God created it. Um, so time passed for Adam, um, but the, the, the way time passed was different because he had life. He had the life of God. And, um, we, while we don't know how long Adam was in the garden with Eve, um, if you want to play around with the thought, we know that Adam was 130 when he had Seth, the son. So when you account for how long Cain and Abel's around, who knows? We don't we, we don't have a clue, but it's just again it's, it's you can get your thoughts going. But Adam lived a spectacular life. And or what's even greater than the, when we look at our the, the the physical side of it where he enjoyed every physical pleasure 
to the fullness. Um, and I'm not talking about just sex. Sex was great for Adam and Eve. And, um, um, but taste. In other words, the five physical senses. He enjoyed that. The smell, right? He, he, he enjoyed the aromas of the garden. Right? Sight. Who knows what were... He, he was... You know, if you live in a major city, you probably don't have all of the sight of the the night sky, right? Adam did though. There was no 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 no, no pollution. But he also enjoyed guess what? He also enjoyed the animals. There was no attacking at that time. So he he enjoyed every animal. Lions, tigers, bears, right? And it wasn't no oh my either. Um, he, um, again, he, he enjoyed life to the fullness. He enjoyed life to the fullness. <clears throat> the five physical senses. But what made that so fulfilling was he also enjoyed fellowship with God. And if you remember... We talked about what is man, and we talked about the spirit, soul, and body of man. Kind of look at that picture there. You see man as a complete being, and then you see body, soul, spirit, a spirit, soul, body. The soul there is the immaterial part. Um, this is a kind of a nice breakdown of what the spirit soul in the body with your spirit you have a awareness of God a sensitivity to God and understanding motivation in other words you're 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 contacting the realm of God with your body through your five physical senses you cut your sight hearing taste touch and smell you contact the physical world around you the physical world around you and both spirit and soul what you receive it 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 influences it shapes it matures it educates your mind or well, this is this is the component of your soul your mind your emotions your desires <coughs> and your will the will is very important because Man always sins because of his will. How do you? How do you? How does man will to sin? And this is, you know, sin is going to be something that's very interesting. How does man will to sin? Okay. And um, so that that is something that man, you know, he as he wills, um, hmm. Okay, so as he wills to sin, how does man will? What is his will? Okay, so, um, well, let me just say this. He wills to sin because of what comes through his spirit and his body. Adam enjoyed fellowship with God. He enjoyed fellowship with God. He enjoyed, um, again, a consciousness of God. And that's important. He enjoyed a consciousness of God. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, apologies, guys. My stuff is just not working like it's, like it's supposed to work. All right. But anyway, so he enjoyed... All of this fellowship with God, um, and um, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, so Adam, let me go back to my picture here. Adam was a completely alive unto God, right? All of this was alive unto God. That's what made Adam's life so great. 
And just by the way, too, heaven, heaven, eternal life, Jesus defined eternal life in John chapter 17. He, he defined eternal life as knowing God. That's how Jesus, in the 17th chapter of John, that's how he... Um, um, that's how he d defined life. I mean, eternal life. Okay. And, um, so, um, Adam enjoyed that until he sinned. Uh, Adam enjoyed, um, yeah, I know I keep, it keeps, in, I know, I don't know why. Uh, but anyway. But anyway, so. Um, Adam in the garden with all the creation including Eve um, just had no limitations but also there was no there was no shame Remember, Adam and Eve were, were naked in the garden and they were not ashamed okay so so only one command that really God had given them. And let's read it again. So now we see all of all of the all of the um, beautiful life. Verse 16 again. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now I want to go over this again because what does he mean by die what does death mean to Adam what does he mean by that um, and so the word death as it is used in the Bible has three meanings the root meaning means to be separated from um, let me go back to my statue now so depending on there, there are three kinds of death so the first death, when you look at man as a complete, at this picture here, the I'm going to talk. I, I'm not going to talk too much about the third meaning of the word death, other than it means to be eternally separated from God, and that will be based upon people's rejection of the gospel. So if you go to Revelation chapter 20. You see the great right of judgment. Um, Paul talked about, and by the way, there's only one reason why people are going to go to hell. There's only one reason why people will uh, experience that eternal damnation. Only one reason. Now, some people think it's because of the lifestyle. So even when you think about like a Hitler, when you think about some of the most evil men that do who do some of the most evilest things, who commit some of the most heinous and evilest things, people think that that's the reason why they're going to hell. That is not the reason why. For example, Hitler didn't go to hell because he was evil Hitler. Hitler went to hell because he did not obey God's gospel to be saved, meaning believe on Jesus. That is why. Now, because he did not believe, then he was evil and that evilness plays out in various ways in, in in different people and i said we all have inclinations to sin we do not all have the same inclination to sin there are some people that just love to commit murder they just love it they just love to commit murder right that's an inclination to sin. There are some people who love to just get high. There are some people who love to engage in sexual whatever, right? They have an inclination for that. So everybody don't have that. But that is not why people are going to hell. They're going to hell because they do not obey the gospel. So that's 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 the the sec the 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 the, the, the was, it's actually in, in the book of Revelation called the second death, but.
but uh, and for that definition of how we define death and remember God he tells Adam if you eat of the tree you will die now what is interesting is Adam ate of the tree in fact God said let's read it again not only did he say that but in verse 16 he says um, for on the day that you eat from it you will certainly die now this is extremely important here because he says the day that you eat of the tree you will die now what is if, what happened is that Adam did eat of the tree but lived 900 and what did Adam was 900 I believe not 969 years I believe Adam lived um, so what did so now we have to understand this 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 this, this, this word death right because Adam did eat he did eat of the tree but when he ate he did leave he lived like I say so I think it was some 900 and was it 930 now I'm curious now bring it up right quick uh, um, but let's see uh, Adam lived because it's kind of funny when we look at this from the standpoint of what does the Bible mean okay Adam lived nine oh I'm sorry he was 930 years it was one of his sons who lived 968 but still Adam lived 930 years <coughs> excuse me after he ate of the tree and then he died God said, on the day that you eat, you will die. Okay? So we have to understand this, this, this the term death. What does death mean? So again, I just kind of gave a quick definition of the eternal death. There are three kinds of deaths. Spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death. Eternal death is the great right throne judgment, the eternal banishment from the presence of God. Okay, the death that Adam then experienced on the day he ate from the tree was spiritual death. So, look at him, the spirit. On this day, Adam was cut off from God. He was separated. He was alienated from God's life. <coughs> Excuse me okay alienated from God's life <clears throat> and um, um, so now when Adam ate of the tree he, he's, he, he is separated I'm sure I drew this in here okay so now look at this through his spirit is now separated from God he's no longer receiving sensitivity understanding knowledge awareness fellowship he's no longer he's no he's alienated from that he's cut off from that and then ultimately all of mankind because we were born in Adam okay because we were born in Adam we experienced the same let me read this from first Corinthians now first Corinthians chapter 21 he says, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Verse 22. For as in Adam all die. So also in Christ all will be alive. But notice this statement. So as in Adam all die. So what does he mean by that? We were alienated from God through Adam. Adam was alienated from God. So now, Adam, through his spirit, he's cut off. He's no longer aware of God. He's no longer in fellowship with God. And worse, he's no longer connected to God. There's no life force. The, the life that was that emanates from God's very presence Adam is cut off from that 
and of course all of mankind so spiritual death means separation the root de definition of death is to be separated from so spiritual death means to be separated or alienated from the life of God that's what spiritual death means okay um now I said that when Adam ate of the tree God said that on the day that he would eat right he would die that's what happened that day Adam was alienated from God and then 930 years later he physically died so now physical death <coughs> okay physical death is the separation this the, the separation of the spirit and soul from the body okay this the separation of the spirit and the soul from the body now we all we 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 all know about that that when you physically die right we, we've been the funeral we see a body but we no longer can talk fellowship with the person the loved one the friend or whatever right every and, and of course death is something that's so common um, even though when you go through it the impact of death is always <laughs> still impactful no, even if you know your loved one is dying when they breathe their last if you're there death is always even just the the, the hearing of it it's impactful okay um, but it is this, your, your, your spirit and your soul is separated from your body so that means your spirit and your soul no longer can see through the body hear taste touch smell contacting the physical world you're cut off um so this scene here i just want to show you one particular thing here this is the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, in verse 31, it says, verse 30 says, Suddenly two men were talking with him, meaning Jesus, Moses and Elijah. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his death, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. And the reason why I brought that up is because, remember, Elijah and Moses that both of them had been dead for centuries centuries Elijah probably had been dead some three eight, I mean 800 years Moses somewhere around 1500 years so that's a lot of centuries and all of a sudden now they show up and they're talking to Jesus as Peter is watching this scene here the first scene obviously was the brilliance of Jesus shining through then all of a sudden Elijah and Moses show up now watch this too by the way they're talking to Jesus they're talking to Jesus right they they actually are talking with him and that 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 gives us a whole lot that beyond death there's a whole lot of stuff going on, right? That we, we, we can't see right now because we're in the physical, we can't see. I want to say that this probably should be comforting. This should be comforting for us because there's always a fear of death. We fear it. it, it, it in, in, in a sense, the fear could be good because you know you're not gonna walk off in in, in traffic you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna I, I knew some 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 guys whenever I would I, I, I 
by trade, uh, my trade, I worked in mechanical areas of office buildings and buildings. And uh, one of the things I used to love about my trade is that I used to love working in high rises because I had access to the roof on high, high rise. The view was spectacular. Believe it or not, some of those high rise buildings, they don't have rails around them. They don't. You can just walk right off. Right? You can just, you know, walk right off, you know, just like this little thing picture here. Right here. You, that's how a lot of uh, the top of buildings are. There's no, no, no guard. You just, and if you're not careful, yeah, you can just walk right off. Right? Sometimes I'd walk to the edge and look over. Um, but I, but I, there was always kind of a fear. Okay, a fear that you're you're on the edge. Now sometimes people can override that fear when they get drunk, delusional, emotional. You know, in other words, despondent suicidal things like that but just kind of normal people have that fear and I was always aware of that when I stepped up on the roof I was okay if I walk too far boom the next step is 50 stories down okay 50 stories um, I, and it was I, I, I used to even think well how come they don't put a rail up some of the buildings I worked with did have that kind of they would have like maybe a three or four foot kind of just like a wall but Believe it or not, a lot of the buildings just have just a, you just walk right off. Well, of course, you're not supposed to be up there like that anyway, right? That that's the way the designers, you know, you, you know not everybody's supposed to be up there and all that. But anyway, but I was always aware of that. Is what I'm saying. So I, you have that fear of death, and that's a good thing though because I, it made me aware. Now let me just not la 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 kind of walk around. I was always kind of conscious, cognitive. That this is a dangerous situation up here. Love the view, but it's a dangerous situation, right? I wouldn't even sit on the edge and put my feet out. Just no, I don't. I didn't want the wind blowing or something. No, I don't want to slip over. I was always aware of it. Physical death, but but when you look at this scene with Elijah and Moses, in other words, I, I think one of the things, of course, with, with, the, with the fear of death is what, what's on the other side. We, we know as believers to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So, um, the, the ideal of knowing that, however, it still doesn't, we still have that fear. And 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 I and, and and I think in some respects it is instinctive, so that we won't be so cavalier. Like I say, so you just won't walk off a building, so you just won't walk off a building, things like that, right? Even though we do other things that could be that could bring us near death, and of course, most a lot of times we just don't know death is coming. The Bible tells us that um, in the book of Hebrews that Jesus destroyed that fear of death. And when I'm saying this, when I look at when I look at this scene here, that Moses and Elijah just showed up. Moses and Elijah just showed up, and they were talking with Jesus. Now, obviously, they just didn't show up on their own. They they came by the sovereignty of God. But here's my point. They showed up. And what you see is you don't see. Uh, you see people that's aware. You see Moses and Elijah, they're conscious. And Luke even tells us what they're talking about. They were talking about his death. That, that Think about that. They were talking about his death. Now, that, that's a whole nother thing. We're talking about, you know, the old, you, you see a merger of the Old and New Testament right there. In other words, the Old Testament, and I'm veering off a little bit, but you see the, the, this merger here. You don't, you, you see them talking about his death, meaning they were cognitive of his death. 
Now I'm going to jump ahead a little while, a little bit because the Bible gives us some reasons. In the book of Galatians, Paul tells us that Abraham foresaw, he would, it was revealed to him, he foresaw the death of Christ and believed. And the Bible says it was credit to him for righteousness. Peter tells us that all of the saints knew about this coming, this, this salvation. These Old Testament saints. In the book of Hebrews, in the 11th chapter, we're told that these died in faith. Not knowing. They died in faith. And um, so when we get to the other side, okay, our awareness and knowledge jumps up, who knows, right, 100, 100 fold, whatever. And my point is that we, we, we get these glimpses in scripture. Here is Elijah and Moses who had been dead for centuries. Elijah, 800 centuries. Moses, some 1500 centuries. Dead, and yet they show up and they're talking to Jesus about his death. They were aware of what Jesus was doing. They were cognitive of what Jesus is doing. Now, that's kind of the, the comfort that I mentioned that we should, it, it ease us with fear of death. Right? Um, and I'm not even saying that, no, no, I'm not, you know, in other words, we're here on this planet to do God's will, but that is, um, again, like I say, it should be comforting. So physical death, physical death is the spirit and soul separating from the body. We no longer can contact the physical world because we contact the physical world through our senses. Now, Let's go back to Elijah and Moses for a moment. Um, Elijah and him, where, where are you? Where is my chapter at? Uh, uh, where is Luke at? Luke, oh, here you are. Um, I want to look at something here. and. Verse 30 again, suddenly two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah. Now here's what I want you to understand here. What were Peter, remember, remember Peter, James, and John, they they are watching this. They 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 walk up, they go up to the mountain with Jesus. Jesus is the brilliance of Jesus shines through. White like a glistening white, glorious light. And all of a sudden they see Moses and Elijah. What were they looking at? What was it that they saw? I just said Elijah had been dead for eight centuries. Moses dead for the 15 centuries. So their bodies are dead. And 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 while we you could probably debate, well, remember Elijah went up into heaven. Uh, I would, I would debate not his body, but Moses was buried. We know he was buried. What did they see? There was a story in Luke, also chapter fifteen, about a rich man and a poor man. And the rich man. Well, the very selfish man, sinful man, and the poor man, well, the godly man, but poor. The Bible tells, Jesus is telling the story. He says, both of them died. The rich man died and was buried. So he had bodies. So watch this. In hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes. What's, what is, what's lifted up? Right? What's lifted up? So we look at spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is a being, is what I'm saying here now. 
the spirit is a being that lives in a body has a soul when the spirit dies it is separated from the body but it is a being Elijah and Moses showed up talking with Jesus. What was talking with Jesus? They saw two men. They saw two spirit beings. Except with man, he lived in a body. His spirit soul lived in a body. Okay. So, um, I, I, I wanted to kind of under, uh, understand this because next week we're going to get into then break when we break down then Adam's actual sin what happened to Adam but understand what man is at the Bible unfolded what what is man he has the spirit he has the soul they that spirit and soul lived in the body. Now, currently, Moses and everyone who dies right now in the Lord, everyone who dies in the Lord, they're in heaven. As Paul said, to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. But they do not have bodies. They don't have bodies. The, we are the promise of salvation that is yet to be fulfilled is the glorification of our bodies. Okay. All right. So right now, if you was to die in the Lord, you would go to heaven. But watch this: you would go to heaven. That spiritual being, you would go to heaven. And isn't it interesting? How did Peter and him even know that they were talking to Moses and Elijah? Think about that, right? Now, um, so when we when we break this down, okay, man is the spirit, has the soul, living the body. We are going to get in next week that Adam was separated from the body. I mean, I'm sorry. When Adam when Adam ate of the tree, his spirit was separated from God. That spirit that is separated from God still exists. Right? It still exists. The spirit. And you can even say the spirit, soul, and body exist but exist apart from God the spirit soul and body exist but exist apart from God because we exist apart from God we do not have the spiritual life the spiritual substance to sustain us or to sustain our entire being so our bodies wear out they age and wear out okay then death happens we the spirit is always separated from our bodies now the sad thing of course is that if you do not know the Lord you keep rejecting the Lord your spirit and soul is separated from your body and is continues to be separated from the Lord and that is the sin that we will see being carried out. Alright guys, um, we'll pick up with this next week and um, we're going to get into the actual sin. We're going to see Adam, we're going to see, kind of experience Adam's separation from God. And, and, and again, I'm, we're going through this so that we can understand this is what redemption is about. When we say we're saved, this is what we're saved from. All right, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I will see you next week. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.